Beneath the endless Siberian ice, scientists uncovered something they never expected. Perfectly preserved mummies, frozen for centuries, their faces still eerily intact. But what they found inside these ancient bodies has shaken the scientific world to its core. Were these people victims of a mysterious ritual? Or something far more terrifying, hidden beneath the ice? The discovery began deep in the Altai Mountains, a place so remote and harsh that only the most resilient could survive. Here, archaeologists searching ancient burial mounds of the nomadic Paziric people stumbled upon something remarkable. As they cut through layers of frozen soil, their tools scraped against wooden chambers sealed in ice. When they carefully opened them, they were met not with bones, but with faces. Faces that looked as though they might wake at any moment. The cold had preserved them in ways unlike anything seen in Egypt or South America. These were ice mummies, bodies perfectly entombed by nature's harshest element. What stunned scientists most was the extraordinary detail. Many of these bodies bore elaborate tattoos, mythical beasts, griffins with arched wings, and deer leaping across their skin. These were not simple markings. They were works of art, etched into flesh with such precision that they remain visible today. Scholars debate their meaning. Were they spiritual guides meant to protect the soul on its journey? Were they marks of rank, telling the story of warriors and leaders? Or were they symbols of cultural identity, branding individuals with legends of their people? Whatever their purpose, they make the Pazaric some of the earliest known bearers of intricate body art, a living canvas that survived the march of centuries. But the tattoos were just the beginning. The burial chambers revealed a world of astonishing richness. Clothing woven from wool, felt, and even imported silk spoke of far-reaching trade networks that stretched as far as Persia and China. Their craftsmanship was exquisite. Robes dyed in brilliant colors, stitched with patterns that reflected both artistry and practicality. This was no isolated tribe scratching out survival in the cold. These were people connected to vast cultural networks across Eurasia. Among the most famous discoveries was the body of a young woman unearthed in 1993, buried in a wooden chamber beneath layers of ice. She became known as the Siberian Ice Maiden. Her long blonde hair was carefully arranged into intricate braids, her body swaddled in furs, her head crowned with a tall headdress that soared nearly two feet high. Painted designs marked her face, while tattoos spiraled across her shoulders and arms. Yet the science revealed something even more haunting. She had died from breast cancer at just 25 years old. Modern medical imaging uncovered tumors in her body, offering a glimpse not only into ancient burial rituals, but into the diseases that plagued humanity long before modern records began. Her death was tragic, but her preservation allowed her story to echo across millennia. The burials were far from ordinary graves. Many chambers contained horses, sometimes up to nine in a single mound. These animals, dressed in ornate saddles and masks shaped like rams or griffins, were sacrificed to accompany their owners into the afterlife. Some mummies were buried with cannabis, perhaps used in ritual or for pain relief. Weapons, ornaments, and even entire chariots were discovered alongside the bodies. These choices were deliberate. They tell us that the Paziric believed life continued beyond death and that one's possessions and companions traveled with them. It was a world where the boundary between the living and the dead was thin and where ritual defined existence itself. What is perhaps most astonishing is the role the ice played. Unlike desert mummies of Egypt, preserved by dry heat, or the Andean mummies protected by altitude, these Siberian mummies owe their survival to the merciless cold of the permafrost. When the burial chambers flooded with meltwater and then froze solid, the bodies were sealed in blocks of ice. Bacteria could not thrive. Flesh did not rot. The result was an unintentional time capsule 
freezing a culture in place for archaeologists to rediscover thousands of years later. Recent technologies have added new layers to the story. Using infrared imaging, researchers have identified tattoos invisible to the naked eye, revealing hidden designs beneath the skin. Genetic testing has traced connections between the Pazaric and other nomadic peoples, proving that their influence stretched across the vast steppes of Eurasia. Their story is no longer seen as a forgotten footnote, but as a critical piece of the human puzzle, linking East and West through trade, art and belief. And yet, with every revelation comes an urgent warning. The same permafrost that preserved these mummies is now melting at an alarming rate. Climate change threatens to erase these frozen time capsules before they can be studied. Bodies that survive two millennia may decay in mere decades. Scientists race against time, excavating and preserving as much as they can, knowing that once the ice is gone, these stories will vanish forever. Standing before these mummies is like staring into a mirror that reflects not just the past, but our own mortality. Their tattoos whisper of beliefs we barely understand. Their horses, their weapons, their clothing. Every artifact tells us that they lived, loved, fought, and dreamed, just as we do today. They remind us that cultures rise and fall, but human expression, art, and belief endure. The frozen mummies of Siberia are not silent relics. They are voices speaking from the ice, urging us to remember. They tell us of resilience, of beauty crafted in hardship, and of mysteries still waiting to be solved. And perhaps their greatest message is this, that the past is never truly gone. It is only waiting to be uncovered. But Siberia isn't the only place where ice guards ancient secrets. Thousands of miles south, beneath the frozen expanse of Antarctica, scientists have stumbled upon something even more astonishing. Evidence of an ancient frozen civilization buried deep under the ice. We're going deep into the icy heart of a mystery that's captivated explorers and researchers for centuries. Antarctica. We know it now as a desolate frozen wasteland buried under miles of ice. But what if I told you it wasn't always that way? What if beneath that frozen surface lie secrets of a past so ancient it challenges everything we think we know about human history? There's compelling evidence suggesting Antarctica was once a vibrant green continent. Fossil records reveal a past teeming with life, forests, and a climate vastly different from today. But the real question is, was it green during the time of humans? This is where things get truly fascinating, and frankly, a little controversial. We're going to explore a theory, the Earth Crust Displacement Hypothesis. Charles Hapgood, in his 1958 book, The Earth's Shifting Crust, proposed that the Earth's entire lithosphere can, at times, shift dramatically. Imagine the skin of an orange sliding independently of the core. Hapgood, referencing the work of geologist Hugh Orkincloss Brown, suggested this could have placed Antarctica outside the polar region, allowing it to flourish even during the last ice age. Now, mainstream geology largely dismisses this. Plate tectonics, as we understand it, doesn't support such rapid, massive shifts. However, this was the same argument presented to a young Albert Einstein, who was intrigued by Hapgood's research and even wrote the foreword for his book, stating, I frequently receive communications from people who wish to consult me concerning their unpublished ideas. It goes without saying that these ideas are very seldom possessed of scientific validity. The very first communication, however, that I received from Mr. Hapgood electrified me. Let's not dismiss this outright. Let's delve into the supporting evidence however circumstantial it may be. Consider the ancient myths and legends found across cultures worldwide. The Epic of Gilgamesh from ancient Mesopotamia describes a catastrophic flood. The Anunnaki lifted up the torches, setting the land ablaze with their glare. Ninurta went forth and made the dikes overflow. Similar flood narratives exist in the Bible, in Hindu texts, 
and in the legends of indigenous peoples across the Americas. Are these merely stories or echoes of a real event, a cataclysm that wiped out a lost civilization, perhaps one that thrived in a temperate Antarctica? Hapgood believed that the survivors of this cataclysm may have dispersed across the globe, carrying their advanced knowledge with them. We know that sea levels rose drastically at the end of the last ice age, inundating vast coastal areas. The Piri race map, drawn in 1513 but allegedly based on far older source maps, depicts the coastline of Antarctica without ice. How could a 16th century mapmaker know this detail unless he had access to ancient knowledge, knowledge that predates the supposed discovery of Antarctica by hundreds, even thousands of years? Let's look at the potential influence of this lost civilization. Consider the similarities between ancient Egypt and Sumeria, their pyramids, their advanced understanding of astronomy, their complex writing systems. Could these seemingly disparate cultures have inherited their knowledge from a common ancestor, a civilization that thrived in a pre-glacial Antarctica? The discovery of ancient maps, like the Orontius Phineas map of 1531, that accurately depict longitude, a feat supposedly not achieved until the 18th century, further fuels this speculation. These maps suggest that someone, long before our recorded history, possessed the ability to map the world with remarkable precision, even during the last ice age. Now let's jump forward to a site that's rewriting the timeline of human history. Gobekli Tepe in Turkey. Dated to around 9600 BCE, this megalithic complex predates Stonehenge and the Egyptian pyramids by thousands of years. Graham Hancock, in his book Magicians of the Gods, argues that Gobekli Tepe is evidence of a lost, advanced civilization. He points to the intricate carvings, the astronomical alignments, and the sheer scale of the construction, suggesting a level of sophistication previously thought impossible for that era. Consider the astronomical alignments of ancient sites worldwide. The Great Pyramid of Giza is famously aligned with Orion's Belt, while Stonehenge is aligned with the solstices and equinoxes. These alignments demonstrate a profound understanding of celestial mechanics, an understanding that, according to the conventional timeline, shouldn't have existed at that time. The theory posits that this lost civilization wasn't limited to monumental architecture. They may have possessed advanced navigational skills, allowing them to travel vast distances and disseminate their knowledge across continents. The similarities in architectural styles and astronomical knowledge found across ancient cultures, separated by vast oceans, could be explained by this shared origin. Furthermore, the precision and complexity of these megalithic structures suggest engineering skills far beyond what we traditionally attribute to prehistoric societies. Ruins of ancient cities, like those found in the Indus Valley, reveal sophisticated urban planning, advanced sanitation systems, and a level of societal organization that challenges our understanding of early human development. To understand the possibility of a once green Antarctica, we need to journey back to the Eocene Epoch, roughly 56 to 34 million years ago. During this time, Antarctica was in roughly the same position it is today, yet the global climate was significantly warmer. Fossil evidence from this period reveals lush rainforests, populated by diverse flora and fauna. The breakup of the supercontinent Pangaea, and later Gondwana, played a crucial role in shaping Antarctica's climate. As continents drifted apart, ocean currents shifted, eventually leading to the formation of the Antarctic Circumpolar Current. This current, as described by geologists, effectively isolated Antarctica, setting the stage for its eventual glaciation. The formation of the Drake Passage between Antarctica and South America further contributed to this isolation. Towards the end of the Eocene, or the beginning of the Oligocene, the Antarctic Circumpolar Current, the largest ocean current in the world, began to form. This current acted as a thermal barrier, preventing warmer waters from reaching the continent and contributing to its cooling. Fossil evidence from the Eocene paints a vivid picture of a vastly different Antarctica. Forests of beech, conifers and ferns thrived in a warm, humid climate. These fossils, including those of ancient plants and pollen, provide tangible proof that Antarctica was once a green and vibrant land. Sea levels during the Eocene were significantly higher due to the lack of large ice caps. This resulted in different coastal configurations, with areas now above water submerged at that time. The warmer temperatures and higher sea levels fostered a rich and diverse marine ecosystem, 
distinct from the Antarctic marine life we see today. The Eocene Epoch serves as a powerful reminder of the dynamic and ever-changing nature of our planet. It highlights the interconnectedness of geological, climatic and biological processes and provides a glimpse into a past where Antarctica, now a frozen desert, was a land of lush forests and abundant life. So, as we stand on the precipice of the unknown, gazing out at the icy expanse of Antarctica, let's remember that beneath that frozen surface may lie the remnants of a lost world, a civilization that predates our own, a civilization that could rewrite the very story of humanity. The truth, as they say, is out there, waiting to be unearthed. If you enjoyed this video, you're absolutely going to love what we have coming next. Prepare to be amazed as we journey into the heart of the Sudanese desert to explore the lost civilization of the Kingdom of Kush. We'll be uncovering the secrets of the incredible Meroe Pyramids, over 200 structures that showcase the advanced culture and rich history of the Kushite people. These pyramids, hidden in the sands, rival even the famous pyramids of Egypt. We'll delve into everything from their unique burial practices and mastery of ironworking to their vast trade networks. Join us as we explore this breathtaking archaeological site and witness the legacy of a civilization that time nearly forgot. We've talked about alternative theories to how the pyramids were built. I'm willing to accept that the Great Pyramid was largely completed by the ancient Egyptians, but remember that the ancient Egyptians tell us in many of their texts that everything they knew was a legacy, an inheritance of the gods. And I don't construe the gods as aliens. When we think of pyramids, Minds immediately journey to Egypt. The towering Giza Plateau with its majestic stone structures has long captured the world's fascination. But what if we told you that Egypt didn't build the first pyramids? Long before the sands of the Sahara surrounded the grand monuments of the pharaohs, a lesser-known civilization to the south built pyramids that have stood for millennia. Today, these mysterious structures quietly guard their ancient secrets. This is the story of Meroe, an ancient city in the heart of modern Sudan, where the first man-made pyramids may have risen, and where we begin to unravel a mystery that challenges everything we thought we knew about ancient history.